<clears throat> call the eighth regular meeting of the Common Council of Order. Sue, would you please call the roll? Bauman? Here. D. Berg? Here. E. Berg? Here. Serta? Here. Davis? Here. Graf? Here. Kittleson? Here. Manny? Here. Meyer? Here. Montemayor? Here. Radke? Here. Sagali? Here. Stefan? Here. Susha? Here. Van Akron? Ann Vanderweel? Here. 16 present. Quorum's present. Approval of the minutes. Alderman Graf. Thank you, Your Honor. I would move that we dispense with the reading of the um, minutes of the previous Common Council meeting and the same stand approved is entered on the record. Second. There's a motion and a second. Under discussion? If not, all those in favor state aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries. Minutes stand approved. Pledge of Allegiance. I'd ask uh, Oliver Matty to please lead us. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you, Alderman Manny. Next we have public forum. Sue. Uh, let's see here. First on the list is Susan Hunley. And Susan, could you give me your home address, please? 632 Michigan Avenue, Sheboygan. And you will have five minutes. Thank you. Thank you, Mayor Perez and Council, for allowing me the opportunity to speak again tonight. I would also like to thank the Finance Committee for allowing me the opportunity to speak at their July 25th meeting to explain the reasons I feel a room tax commission should be established for Sheboygan. As you all know, I have been lobbying for a room tax commission since 1999. So to be offered this time to explain the benefits of a room tax commission was a very positive sign for me. So much so that I contacted my attorney and asked if this might be able to help resolve the issues in my lawsuit with the city regarding room tax. My attorney agreed with me that this was a very positive sign and there was an option I could use that could possibly resolve the room tax lawsuit without continuing with the Court of Appeals. I'd recently heard uh, Alterman Serta state that she wanted to let the taxpaying public know how a local small business owner had been treated by the council regarding a parking lot. I think the taxpayers should be aware of what happened when my attorney contacted our city attorney with an option that could have potentially resolved the room tax lawsuit and saved the millions of dollars involved if I win the suit. What my attorney did was ask the city attorney for a 60-day hold because of a possible settlement. I had informed my attorney to tell the city attorney that with my upcoming opportunity to explain the benefits of a room tax commission, I would in all likelihood be able to drop the whole lawsuit with no cost to the city. He was informed by the city attorney that he would not agree to the 60-day hold because he did not feel a settlement would happen. I feel this was wrong. I do not think a decision this important should be decided by one person. You, the council, should have had the opportunity to know about this offer, potentially stopping the lawsuit and saving the taxpayers millions of dollars if I win. I still cannot understand why this request to give 60 days to resolve this lawsuit was denied. Like Alterman Serta's uh, concern regarding the parking lot, I feel it is important that you and all the taxpayers know this. The opportunity for the 60-day hold is passed uh, now. It's gone. The next time the room tax lawsuit is discussed will be by three appellate judges who have no political ties to the city and who re will review it with fresh eyes. The lawsuit is now a legal issue, not open to negotiations. I feel this is not in the best interest of the taxpayers, but by denying my attorney a 60-day hold, our city attorney left me, with, left me with only one option, the appellate court. Remember, the appellate court does not operate under the same political pressures as a local circuit court. The outcome may very well be in my favor, but also remember, I have tried now four times to settle this lawsuit once before it even started, and each time my attorney was told simply no, no negotiations. Thank you for your time. Thank you, Susan. You're welcome. Uh, next on the list is Carter Paulus. 
And Carter, could you give me your home address, please? 414 Erie Avenue. And you will have five minutes, sir. Thank you, Your Honor, for the opportunity to speak for the Common Council. This came as a last-minute decision uh, this afternoon, based on some information I just became in possession of. I happen to be interested in fiscal responsibility, period. It just is coincidental that I am a member of the Sheboygan County Taxpayers Alliance, and we are circulating a petition because of the absolutely ridiculous price pulled out of the air for a police facility. And at no time has anyone from the Common Council or any other source come across with any valid or explainable reasons how you got to a $17 million figure, which in reality is $18.5 million. And I want to assure the Council that we are going to keep on picking and picking until we get fiscal responsibility in this city. Now let's talk about your $17 million. Well, here it is, folks. 2,005 cost estimates for building a police station from architects. You should be building it for approximately $6 million. And you haven't even started talking about cost-cutting measures in lighting, communications, and emergency lighting, and all of the related fixtures that you need. If you wanted the best of all, you could probably go with about $7.7 .7 million. So again, the question is asked, where do you think you're coming from? This is really ridiculous. And the citizens and the taxpayers of Sheboygan are fed up to there with the excessive taxes in this city. And we ask you to become fiscally responsible and deal with the truth. And while we're about truth, I am awfully disgusted in hearing about people putting out words that are, in my opinion, scare tactics. What am I talking about? Well, the 23rd Street site is contaminated. But when you look into it, what kind of contamination are you talking about? The public might think in terms of hazardous contamination. It's not. Tree trunks are not contamination. And today's knowledge in how to handle things is far superior than it was even a year, let alone two or three years ago. So I don't like hearing about contamination without a definition of what you're talking about. Thank you very much. Thank you, Carter. And that's it. Thank you very much. <clears throat> Thank you, Sue. Uh, Attorney McLean. Thank you, Your Honor. I just, uh, if, I, if I could, I'd like to respond a little bit to Ms. Hunley's uh, comment about the fact that I wouldn't agree to a 60-day hold. Uh, I received a phone call. I think it was either the day or two days after uh, the Finance Committee met and uh, from Ms. Hungley's attorney. And she, uh, he uh, indicated he was intending to write a letter to the Court of Appeals uh, requesting ex an extension of time in which to file their brief. Their brief is due sometime at the end of July. And he, wanted, he asked whether he could represent that the city agreed to that 60-day extension. I said I couldn't do that because I hadn't addressed it with the council. I asked, I said, uh, if you want me to present that to the council, send me something in writing, I'll present it to the council. He said uh, he wouldn't do that, he didn't intend to do that. So, um, uh, and I wasn't going to agree to any sort of extension without discussing that with the council. So I, I think that ought to be made clear. The issue is the timing of the brief to be filed by the appellant to the Court of Appeals. Um, they file the appeal, they've got, you know, the timeline starts ticking, 
and they've got a period of time in which to file their brief. Uh, likewise, the city and the Great Lakes will have an opportunity or in a time frame to file their brief. Uh, but I, it was simply a matter of when he called, I wasn't in a position to, on behalf of the city, say that we were going to agree to any sort of 60-day extension of the uh, uh, time for filing the brief. So that, that was the long and short of the conversation, and uh, I haven't heard anything since. Thank you, Attorney McLean, for that clarification. Next, we move to the mayor's report. Wanted to talk to the council a little, about, a little bit about the citizens' budget process that I'm putting into place. When I campaigned for mayor, I talked about a budget prioritization process, a massive one, a very ambitious one. And I talked about how every single employee in our city is going to have input. They will have the opportunity to tell us how they feel about how we spend our money or how we don't spend our money. I also talked about how the community needed to provide input. So the citizens' budget process will allow for community input and employee input, substantial amount of uh, opportunity there. The question is, is this citizens' budget process going to be in place for this budget this year for 06, for, for the 06 budget, I should say? Probably not, because it's a long process. It'll take uh, almost a year to put into place and, and to see it through. Some of the information that we gather may be useful as we plan for the next year's budget. The process of the budget prioritization process is a benchmark to me because I promised the people when I campaigned that I was going to put it into effect, and I intend to do that. I intend to keep my word. The process is going to be carried out in three phases. The first one will be the community and the employee input. In order to make sure that we gather enough information from the community and the employee, I will be holding 16 listening sessions in each district. And as it turns out, one district may have, I may hold a listening session in each of the wards of each district, but not necessarily so. But there will be 16 listening sessions in each of the eight districts. There will be held at varying times, uh, some at 10, some at 6, to accommodate the different schedules of, uh, of the community. We'll also have input, uh, the citizens and the, and the employees will also have the opportunity to provide input using our website and through some comment forms that we're going to distribute at the library. We'll have them at the mayor's office and we'll have them uh, anywhere that, uh, we'll have them in all departments where the, the employees can pick up a form, give us their input, and turn it in. A lot of this information may be gathered anonymously from the employees. I don't want any employee to tell us anything without, with fear of repercussion from anyone. What I want is input. I want our employees and our community to tell us, this is how we think you should spend our money. This is how we think you shouldn't. This is how you are. We agree. This is how you are. We don't agree, et cetera, et cetera. It'll provide that opportunity. The next step, the, the phase two, will be a survey development based on that community input and that employee input. And that will be put together by Dr. Jack Westfall. Now, many of you, as you know, Dr. Jack Westfall works for the school district. And he plays a very key role in the uh, school administration. He has agreed to provide his services on a volunteer basis, which to me is a very generous uh, uh, effort to take. He will interpret all this information that we're going to get from the community and put together, as a result of that information, a survey that we can then take out to the community and the, and the employees, and they can help us prioritize exactly what it is we should be looking at. Now, mind you, this is a tool. The council can accept this tool or not. I, I will be working with it as mayor as, as I work through my budget process, uh, through the mayor's uh, budget process. The surveys are going to be key because what it'll do, it'll, it'll give us an opportunity to see how the community and the employees see things 
in a very common way. They'll be able to see, we'll be able to see shifts going in the direction of this is where we think you should be spending the money, this is where we think you shouldn't be spending the money. So that survey development is going to be key and that will be the second phase. The third phase will be the assembly of a task force. I will put together a task force for my office of neutral community stakeholders. People who are distant from city government, hopefully have no connection, so that they're able to look at this data and, and, and uh, use it in, in a wise manner. And hopefully be able to use it in conjunction with uh, the department heads as, as they put together, together their budget. So again, it will be phase one, community and employee input. Phase two, the survey development. That information will be gathered, hopefully by the end of November, put together till for December, and then January we start the budget process. And what that tells me is that we're going to be starting our budgeting process for 07 pretty early. It's a budget. Our budget is a very serious, serious thing that we need to that we work on annually, and I want to make sure that I devote enough time to it, and have you devote enough time to it. So when we have that budget put in place, it reflects the needs of the community and balances that need with their ability to pay, which is what I think the citizens have been telling us over and over and over. So hopefully we'll be able to put the citizen budget process together. I hope every one of you will, will help us. Every alderman will be invited to attend each, uh, each session that fits into their district. You may attend all of them if you'd like. The committee may attend one that's in their district or may attend all of them or one that isn't in their district, it doesn't matter. When the comments come in, suggestions come in, there's no right or wrong answer. Just tell us how you feel. It's a very ambitious project, but it's a project that has been proven to work. It has worked with the school district. It has worked with the county, I believe. And this particular citizen's budget process is more or less a hybrid between both entities there. We're hoping to localize, so to speak, uh, a, a budget process that will address our needs and concerns. If any alderman has any questions with respect to my uh, citizen's budget process, by all means, feel free to contact my office. Thank you very much. <coughs> Moving on, we have a, a hearing to amend the zoning map for property at 4160 and 4160A South 12th Street from Class SR3 Suburban Residential 3 to Class MR8 Mixed Residential Classification. Is there anyone interested in speaking regarding this hearing? You're on. Uh, yes, can you please give me your name and your home address? Uh, I'm David Kostichka, 5203 Skylark Drive. Say it again, please. 5203 oh, Skylark Drive. And could you spell your last name? K-O-S-T-I-C-H-K-A. Thank you, Dave. Go ahead. Mr. Mayor, older people, I just want to take this opportunity to say thank you for letting me speak tonight. Uh, I'm the owner of the property at 4160 and 4160A South 12th Street. Uh, I've owned the uh, property for about eight years. I did give everybody a packet, uh, all the older persons. I hope you uh, received it and looked over it. Basically, as you stated, what I'm trying to do is right now the resident is now Residence is now uh, zoned a SR3, and we would like it to be rezoned as a MR8. And what we want to do is put a daycare center in it, uh, just for the rising need of daycares, especially on the south side. And I'll get into a little bit more of that in a, in a, in a moment here. Uh, in your packets, you can see a little bit of the description of the residence, the location. It's right on the corner of uh, Sunnyside and South 12th Street. Uh, very big lot and, and I uh, also listed why it would be a, a very nice place for a day, daycare. Uh, it's only a half a block away from Cons Floral and uh, the Sunnyside Mall. So the, the location is, is, is really, really nice and there is commercial uh, businesses there really nearby and it, like I said, it is right on 12th Street. The main difference that I between a SR3 and a MR8 is one, a duplex can be put on it. 
there already is a duplex on it. Uh, so basically what I, what I want to do, uh, instead of being grandfathered, I want to conform to the zoning uh, regulations that uh, would be in stake there. And, and a daycare center can be put on it. And at the current time, a daycare home could be put on it. We just want to go to a center. A home is up to eight children, and we want to do the nine plus children. And with a, a MR8, the big thing is there's never going to be a gas station there. There's not going to be a McDonald's. Uh, it is very, the MR8 is very restricted yet, so it's not, it's not a commercial zoning that we're looking for. We, we just want this, this uh, rezoning just to, so we can put the center uh, on the residence. As far as the, the dwelling itself, it's going to look the same. It's a house. We're not tearing any buildings down or anything. It's still going to be a house. So the, the neighborhood is still going to, it's still going to sustain the, the same beauty in which it, which it has. The only difference that we will do is in the yard, we're going to put a, in a fence. And I also put uh, kind of in, in the packet a projected fence area that where the house sits. There's a U-shaped driveway. And before that, I didn't mention, but the pictures of the house, as you can see, it's a big, big lot, big, big uh, house. So it's, uh, the fence isn't going to stick out by no means. Uh, what it is going to do for the community. Number one, as I stated before, there's a big, big demand for daycare on the south side uh, compared to the north side. And I also put a list in, in your packet of all the north side daycares and all the south side. You can see the difference uh, th that they have. Being in a house setting, uh, means lower cost for the provider, for the daycare uh, uh, person, which lower, lower rent costs means lower daycare costs for the community. And, and she wants to, uh, uh, Peggy Gustafson is uh, the projected daycare provider. She, her, what she wants to do is a home-like surroundings as a daycare, not a stark building and have uh, children uh, uh, in there. A and you do need a very unique uh, uh, building for inside and outside, big yard and uh, uh, a lot of room inside. I do have some neighbors here uh, from that location. Uh, I also went around the neighborhood, got signatures from location. I provided that on the back page uh, for you of all the uh, neighbors uh, surrounding, uh, and, and they did get mailed their letter to, that they could be here t uh, tonight. Uh, like I said, uh, Peggy uh, Gustafson is going to be the day projected daycare provider. Uh, you can ask her questions in a second, second here. I do think this is uh, uh, an ideal uh, facility for a daycare, just as I stated inside, outside square footage needs that you do need. Uh, one, and, and in closing, what I want to say is for the, the neighborhood, the beauty of the neighborhood in the Sunnyside area, one thing that is controlled in a daycare is the state regulates it. So it it is going to be re regulated. It can, it is going to be a, a nice looking neighborhood yet. And, uh, and I think change is good for, for the community out there with the, uh, on the south side with a daycare. It's, we want to build, Sheboygan has been building the south side up, and with that goes daycare, infant care, everything uh, that a daycare would provide. This is a good rezoning idea and should be uh, accepted for the improvement of the community. Uh, thank you. Any questions by myself or, or Peggy? I also brought neighbors, like I said, uh, Mr. and Mrs. Uh, Brower. They live right across the street from the residence. So on there, sir. Hello, Mr. Golly. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, I would like to know, is this, if I may speak with him, please. Um, 
Is this going to be um, a year round? Is like when uh, the school's off, you're not going to be off, that you're going to be able to provide the daycare to the children when uh, the school is out and that's when the parents need it the most? Uh, I, can, I can answer that, yes, but maybe uh, Peggy, the, the provider, could answer that uh, better. And, and that is the, uh, uh, the intention that it is going to be year round. I know uh, a daycare nearby has the same days as the schools, okay? So when it's a holiday, they're off too, you know, where a lot of times that's when you need the daycare. So this is going to be a summer, you know, when, when schools are off on teacher conventions or what have you, it's still going to be running. Okay. Yeah. Did, uh, would you like to make some comments, Peggy, or not? Well, I'd just like to say that I've been doing child care out of my home on Henry Street, and um, I have always treated it as my business and in a very professional way. And I recently um, finished my schooling for administrative credential and um, am very, um, well, I've been doing it for 17 years. I've watched Susan Hart's daughter. Um, I've watched many children in the community who have have grown, um, have graduated, and, and I feel proud, you know, to be a part of, of the future of Sheboygan. Um, I guess that's, you know, what I'd like to say is that if, if Sheboygan's growing and it, and it is growing, then in order for Sheboygan to grow, we also need child care for the people that are working to help Sheboygan grow. Thank, Thank you. Peggy, could you, excuse me, could you just give me your home address? Sure. 2509 Henry Street. Thank you so much. And please hold with Alderman Manning. Question for yeah, thank you. I've got uh, five questions. Okay. So number one, uh, how many kids over nine could be accommodated? Over nine? The number of nine. Over the number of nine, I plan um, to have a maximum of 20. Okay. Secondly, how does the residence lend itself to daycare? Well, um, you need a certain amount, 35 square foot mm -hmm. per, children, per child, and um, you also need a large first level floor um, if you're caring for infants because of safety reasons to get them out in case of an emergency. Uh, square footage of the whole building? Um, David probably has more of that. Um, I think he said around 30. 2100 square feet. Okay, mm -hmm. thank you. And, um, I understand the whole building would be used for the daycare. No one would be living in half of the duplex, correct? Uh, no, it, it's kind of an unusual duplex. It's more of a townhouse with a mother-in-law suite above the gra garages. So that would still be rented out as a, a, a rental unit. Okay. So that somebody the... would be living there, yes. And they would go through a background check also. Yes. And lastly, what would the tax implications be and maybe uh, Others here in the city could speak to that, uh, i.e., a duplex as it's currently stated and lived uh, versus a daycare center. Would there be tax implications? Okay. Marie Ellis isn't here. We can ask her. Thank you. Thank you, Peggy. <coughs> Is there anyone else who would like to address <coughs> the council? Can I have your name, sir? Uh, Adolf Brower. And I need your home address. 1219 Sunnyside. Okay, go ahead. I'd just like to say a few words. Uh, uh, my wife and I have lived uh, at 1219 Sunnyside for over 40 years across the street from this residence. Through the years, there have been various owners, various renters. Some were good, some were not so good, some were downright bad. So uh, I just urge you to you know, approve this rezoning and subsequent child care facility because I think it can only be a positive and a stabilizing factor in our neighborhood. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Is there anyone else that would like to speak on this hearing? Is there anyone else? Before I ask uh, Mr. Steve Sokolowski to, to uh, also speak on this matter, just for the council's information, this request did go through the City Plan Commission and it was voted not to grant uh, the variance unanimously. The City Plan Commission, as I said, did uh, study the request and looked at it and decided that, that uh, 
it wasn't ready to approve the uh, the change in, in zoning. And I'd like to ask Mr. Steve Sokolowski to uh, elaborate on that. Mayor, Council, good evening. Um, I guess the one thing that I'm here to do, which I feel is the planning department's responsibility for the citizens of Sheboygan Plan Commission and the council is to provide an objective uh, input on a situation like this. I have to take the emotion out of it and I have to take a look at the land use. I have to look at the surrounding area and make a decision and make a recommendation based upon that. First couple of things, you guys probably aren't gonna be able to see this real well, but I'm gonna pass it around and maybe if you wanna pass it uh, to get a feel for where we're at. First thing a person does, you coming in, hey, I'm looking to rezone this property. All right, well, the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take a look at it and see if there's anything around here. What is there, is there, in this case, we're changing it from an SR3, which was one of our most restrictive single family zones, to an MRA, which allows for some duplexes, a little bit more density, and some issues basically allows a daycare as well. So the first thing I do is I take a look at the map and just kind of look at it and see, okay, does it, does, from just from eyeballing it, does it make sense? And taking a look at this, and I'll, that's just the ultimate banner deal, I'll pass that along. This is the property right here. And as everyone takes a look at that, so the first thing I do is I take a look at the property and see what's surrounding it. And this, in this particular case, there is no MR8 in that area whatsoever. It's all suburban residential three. It's all zone restrictive single family. So that's what I take a look at is initially. Second of all, I start to take a look at the types of uses in that zone because that's the next important factor that the council or the plan commission or whomever's making a decision in this matter needs to be aware of. And uh, Mr. Kostichka did mention uh, the fact that you could do some duplexes, you could do some twin houses. What it comes down to is density. SR3 zoning allows for three units per acre. MR8 allows for eight units. So you can get some duplexes and you get the daycares and things like that. As Mr. Kostichka stated, in the SR3 zone, you are able to do a home occupation daycare of up to eight, um, eight children, attendees. So there's an ability as it's zoned right now to do eight. Um, so that's the, the, the other point that they're after, is they're looking obviously to do more eight, and we've heard 20. So there's gonna be, there, there's gonna be kids running around, okay? So there's, there's an issue, no question there. Then what, what I take a look at is, okay, what is, the, what is the purpose of these zones? Again, in that SR3 zone, basically it says the density and intensity standards for this district are designed to ensure that the SR3 district shall serve as a designation which preserves and protects the suburban residential character of the area. Um, again, it's for those who want to live in a suburban residential environment who retain enough land with their residents uh, to ensure that the suburban community character is maintained. So when you look at that map, you're gonna see that that area is zoned SR3, and the reasoning for that is because it's looking for that suburban character. It's looking for that single family aspect. So, so after taking a look at those and, 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 and listening to some of the, uh, we've had plenty of good conversation back and forth, but again, it's my, it's my job to look at this objectively. And there's a couple of things that uh, are mentioned here. One of the things that's mentioned in the closing that the property will always be a business to me. We, we have someone who's not an owner occupied. It is a business. We're looking at a business. That, most of that house is being used for a business. It's not a single family home. So it, it does that fit with that type of zone. You'll make that decision tonight. Um, the daycare's need is unique to that particular property. Again, is it single family or should it be changed to allow this particular property the ability to do things such as a daycare that all of the other properties in the area are not able to do. Um, he does state Sheboygan can't stay the same, and he's absolutely right, and I think there's many areas in town that we can point to that say that it's not changing in town. But you know what, each one of those, we have to take a look at individually and closely enough to make sure that when we're making those changes, that in fact it's the right change to make. 
And then he also mentions this is a good rezoning idea and should be accepted for the improvement of the community. I, I'm not going to sit here and say a daycare is not a good thing in the community. That's not what I'm trying to say. What I'm trying to say is take a look at the area we're talking about and is that the best place for it? Are there other areas in town that are rezoned properly that can have a daycare? The answer to that is yes. And as I recommended to the plan commission and the plan commission recommended to you, um, staff is recommending denial of the proposal. And I'd be happy to answer any questions. Are there any questions for uh, Mr. Sokolowski by Alderman? Thank you, Mr. Sokolowski. Oh, I'm sorry, excuse me. Uh, nope. Oh, Alderman I thought you wanted to speak. Alderman Stefan. Thank you, Your Honor. I guess the only thing I, I'm following you, but yet I'm looking on the map and like 12th and Sunnyside doesn't seem to me to be that. Seems like there's quite a few businesses in that area. I guess that's the what I'm trying to understand here. You know, I, the pictures you've shown us, I can see where yeah, it's a more suburban area, but it seems like right where they are, there are other businesses there. So I guess you know, I'm wondering why why not approve it then if there are businesses that close? Sure, sure. Um, again, I'm taking a look at the general area of that particular neighborhood. You have some businesses to the south, and as a matter of fact, you could operate this daycare center out of those areas that are zoned correct. Um, as I look at the neighborhood and I drive the neighborhood and I see what type it is and looking at the purposes and things like that of the ordinance, I just I, I look at the purpose and I see what's there and and when I look at it objectively, again, I can't I'm not gonna sit here and say a daycare is not a good use, but I just don't think it's a good use in that particular area. Any other questions? Okay, thank you, Mr. Okolowski. And, and should, should the uh, um, council approve it, they still have to go to plan commission for approvals if it would get approved as a conditional use permit. Thank you. Alderman Sagali. Thank you, Your Honor. Uh, may I please ask how long it's been since we've redone our rezoning? Uh, zone laws here in the city. I mean, how, how old as uh, how old are the zonings? Uh, don't they redo zonings um, every once in a while to look at the whole city and to um, um, separate areas and to do different zoning laws on them? Mr. Sokolowski, I think he wants to answer your question here. Thank you. The last time that the city looked at the overall zoning of the city of Sheboygan was in 1996. So occasionally what we have now, every once in a while before the council, we'll have a rezoning before us and that's how it gets taken care of today is, is that if we annex property, we set the zoning when it comes in. If someone wants to make a change, such as this property owner or anyone, it comes to the council, it comes to the plan commission and council. So it's, it's in essence, uh, at such time as an applicant looks and is trying to do something with his property that we bring something before the council. But the last time that the city overall was done was in 1996. Thank you. <laughs> Alderman Graff. Thank you, Your Honor. I move that the hearing be closed. There's, mo there's a motion and a second to close the hearing. Any discussion? Not. All those in favor, state aye. Aye. Any opposed? Here and close. Thank you. Paul McGrath, consent agenda. Thank you, Your Honor. But before I do the consent agenda, I'd like to pull forward document 728, which is the RO by the City Plan Commission, where um, it's in the. Pulling forward 728. That deals with the uh, City Plan Commission recommending the property rezoning. Okay. I'd like to move that the RO be accepted and placed on file. There's a motion and a second to accept the RO, put it on file under discussion. Under discussion, my recommendation though will be to um, vote against that, that um, motion uh, because I went through the property, I met out there with Mr. Um, <coughs> Dave, thank you. <laughs> That's what I, and uh, living in that area, uh, we definitely do need something like this on the south side. There are two daycare centers in, the, in that proximity, 
and uh, both of them uh, are, you could get in, but uh, it may cost you a lot more, and those, again, are only open during the same time the school year is open. Uh, this is something, um, Dave has, has done a lot of remodeling work and painting and cleaning up that property from when the last tenants owned it. Um, and uh, I think it would be a good fit in the neighborhood, and that's why you had neighbors here speaking to it and, uh, and looking at it. And you look, all the corners that n are near this, uh, this property um, are covered. And uh, they're all in favor of uh, keeping it, so therefore I'd uh, ask the council to, um, to vote against filing this and then to overturn it and recommend approval of the um, rezoning. Alderman Graff, could you just add to your motion to accept and file the RO and file the ordinance? That's what yes, their I recommendation is. Thank you. And the second agrees to that? Yes. Alderman Berg. Yes, thank you, Your Honor. Like uh, Alderman Graff said, uh, we went out there with Dave and looked the whole property over. It's a perfect spot for it. He's got the support of all the neighborhood. He went all over, he even went to the south, uh, some of the people in the town of Wilson, because that's so cut up in there. And he's got the support. He's got a good person to run it. And uh, like uh, Alderman Graff said, Montessori is out there, but they work on the school. But, or, uh, schedule it when the school's off a week they're off a week and those people are <coughs> scramble to find daycare so i hope the council here supports changing that zoning and uh, getting the right to open it thank you thank you alderman berg any further discussion alderman manny thank you Ron. um two questions further come to me um would be for steve sokolowski to answer <clears throat> could the owner or a future owner uh, with rezoning choose to knock down the building and put up two to three duplexes or whatever with the yes. new zoning? Yes. Okay. Uh, is there any possibility then for us to qualify the zoning uh, approval uh, so that such a thing could not be done? Well, yeah, talk to Attorney McLean a little bit mm -hmm. or something like that. But pretty much a lot of times where zoning has, it has permitted and conditionally permitted uses. And typically, as long as a person is in that zone, you're allowed to have those types of uses. So um, again, I would probably have to have some conversation with Attorney McLean on that. But I believe that the answer is, as long as it's a use that's permitted or conditionally permitted in that zone, they have that right to apply for that use. Correct? Uh, Thank you. Uh, Mr. Uh, certainly, if, uh, if it's a permitted use, uh, I think they'd have the unqualified right to use that. And I'm not uh, familiar with the specific uh, uses that are permitted in that area. If it's a, if it's a use that's uh, conditionally allowed, you know, it's subject to conditions of the plan commission. Uh, and you know could have some conditions placed on it, but generally a rezone is is kind of a yes or no proposition. Either it's zoned one thing or another. Uh, you get into perhaps contract zoning if you want to, uh, you know, say we'll rezone it if you do this or that or the other thing. Uh, uh, I would advise trying to stay clear of that and uh, just. Uh, keeping the zones kind of clean and not have uh, extraneous conditions placed on them that aren't on the zoning code. Uh, thank you for those responses. And your honor, I would say uh, hearing those, that's my one concern is long term. Uh, I do appreciate what they intend to do right now and will support uh, the motion to uh, move ahead and grant the rezoning. Thank you, Chairman McLean. Thank you, Alderman Manny. Alderman Stefan. Thank you, your honor. I guess I'm, I'm not really up to date on the different zoning regulations. It sounds like you're telling me currently maybe we want, instead of rezoning it, we could give them a conditional use permit as it is. Or couldn't we do that? No. To say you can conditionally use it as a daycare? I don't believe uh, Alderman Stefan and uh, Mr. Sokolowski can address that, but I don't believe a uh, daycare center is a conditional use in a SR3 zone. Correct, and that's why we're here this evening, is they, there's an ability to do up to eight, P, eight uh, attendees if you own and operate out of that residence, like a home occupation. So the only way we can 
approval and implementation zone is what he said to is, rezone it and is right. to rezone it and then and then the opportunity would be available that they would have to come back to the city of Sheboygan Plan Commission and at that point in time they review conditional use permits and oftentimes and in this case there would likely be conditions on the approval of this proposal. So just for clarification though on the vote if I'm like Alderman Berg and Graf and I support going through with this, I should actually vote no, because then I'll go back to the Planning Commission Correct. to bring it back a new Correct. recommendation. Uh, just to clarify, if you voted down the recommendation of the Planning Commission, you could then follow that up with a, a vote uh, well, go on, back to the, them on the zone. The they, could, they could come back with the same thing, but... You wouldn't have to re-refer it back to the Planning Commission. You've got the Planning Commission's recommendation before right. you, it's up to the council whether you want to accept the Planning Commission's recommendation okay. or not. Okay. So no would be to not <coughs> support their denial. Right. And, and I guess to put it in a little bit more basic terms, I guess what we're doing, what the council may consider doing is spot zoning. It's putting one isolated case use in a suburban residential area. Yes. Correct? Okay, uh, I believe uh, Ms. Andrews has some comments. Thank you, Mr. Sokolowski. Thank you, Mayor and Common Council. And I'd also just like to stress that this is a spot zoning situation. You know, and Steve is correct that he, you know, you look at the entire area, you look at the zoning in the area, and what we try to do is be consistent. And then also think not just short term, but long term. Because once you change the zoning on that property, you know, more than likely, it'll, it'll stay that way for a long time. And, you know, although the use is, you know, we have a daycare use that's being proposed or will be proposed, if the zoning changed now, um, as Alderperson Manny had stated, they could raise that building and then create a, you know, a, a housing or other type of development that's much more dense and not consistent with the other properties in the area. Thank you. Thank you, Senator. <clears throat> okay, Sue, is there any further discussion? If not, we're gonna call the roll, but please are explain the vote. Okay. If you vote aye, you are voting to file the RO and file the ordinance, as the City Plan Commission has recommended. If you vote no, you are not going along with their recommendation. Okay. Bauman. No. Deberg. No. Eberg. No. Serta, Davis, no. Groff, no. Kittleson, no. Manny, no. Meyer, no. Montemayor, Aye. Radke, no. Sigali, no. Stefan, no. Susha, no. Van Akron, no. and Vanderweel. No. One eye, 15 no's. Motion carries. Paul McGraw. But motion failed. Motion failed. I'm sorry, <laughs> motion fails. <laughs> and Your Honor, at this time I'd like to move that the general ordinance be put upon its passage. And the RO. Okay. And the RO be accepted and placed on file. Thank you. Also. <laughs> There's a motion and a second. So would you please call the roll? Bauman? Aye. Deberg? Aye. Eberg? Aye. Serta? Aye. Davis? Aye. Graf? Aye. Kittleson? Aye. Manny? Aye. Meyer? Aye. Montemayor? Aye. Radke? Sagali, Stefan, Susha, Aye. Van Akron, Aye. and Vanderweel. Aye. 16 ayes. Motion carries. Thank you. Consent agenda 8 1 through 8 18. Alderman Groff. Thank you, Your Honor. At this time, for the consent agenda, I'd move that all ROs be accepted and placed on file, that all RCs be accepted and adopted, and we pass the resolutions. There's a motion. A second. There's a motion and a second to accept all rows and all RCs and all resolutions be put upon their passage and ordinances be put upon their passage under discussion. Alderman Manny. Thank you, Your Honor. Uh, documents 814 and 815. I think it would be helpful for the community to have uh, some comments offered about what this entails. Um, the educational aspect, we're saving the city some money. So some good work has gone into it. Dale's going to speak, I think. Good afternoon, Mayor and 
council members. Uh, what this is, is uh, it's uh, actually uh, this portion here is, is we're have done a number of projects at the wastewater plant and, and some pump stations that are saving the city uh, or saving energy using less electricity. Uh, last year we, uh, at the Kentucky pump station, we uh, put in two new motors, high efficiency motors and, and variable frequency drives. And that project is, is, was projected to save about $17,000 a year. It looks like we're at closer to $25,000 a year. Uh, at the treatment plant, we're putting in some high efficiency blowers. And uh, those blowers will use less, less electricity and provide better uh, control for our aeration system. That's projected to save about $34,000 a year. In addition, we are uh, in, in, in tonight's agenda with approval. There's uh, we're at the influent pump station at the treatment plant. We are uh, going to put VFDs in and, and, and remove some inefficient eddy current drives, and that's projected to save $22,000 a year. Alliant Energy offers a program called their Shared Savings Program, and what they do is they loan uh, loan the city money, or in this case the, the wastewater utility. Uh, they're loaning us $290,000, 200. Seventy thousand uh, dollars. That's to be paid over five years, and it's at two percent. So we can complete these projects. In addition, there's also, uh, which was approved uh, a couple council meetings ago, a, a cogeneration facility is being installed at the wastewater treatment plant, and we produce methane gas as a byproduct of, of our treatment process, and that methane gas is going to produce electricity. It'll produce about 45% of our energy, our electrical energy uh, needs, and about 25% of our heat needs. Uh, and for the first, that's we partner with with Alliant Energy on that project, and that will save us uh, in in heat and electrical savings a year, about $106,000 for the first year, and after year six, $250,000 a year. So that's basically what we're working on. Questions? Thank you, Dale. <clears throat> okay, we've got uh, 8 1 to 8 18. So, would you please call the roll? D Berg? Aye. E Berg? Aye. Serta? Aye. Davis? Aye. Graf? Aye. Kittleson? Aye. Manny? Aye. Meyer? Aye. Montemayor? Aye. Radke? Aye. Sagali? Aye. Stefan? Aye. Susha? Aye. Van Akron? Aye. Vanderweel aye. and Bauman. Aye. 16 ayes. Motion carries. Communications and petitions 819 through 820 to be referred. Report of officers 821 to 830 to be referred. Resolutions introduced 831 by Alderman Groff entering into an agreement between the City of Sheboygan, the Sheboygan Transit Commission, and Gregory L. Raycom, DBA Cards and Collectibles. Alderman Graf. Thank you, Your Honor. I would ask for a suspension of the rules, please. There's a, there's a, there's a request for suspension of the rules. Any, any objections? Please proceed. Thank you, Your Honor. Uh, at this time, then, I'd move that the resolution be put upon its passage. There's a motion and a second to put the resolution upon its passage. Under discussion? Under discussion, the contract each of you received in your packet of information. Um, Starts out talking about a, a date as of July 1 that they'd like to enter into this contract. As you all know, we're past July 1, so they'd like this acted upon tonight so that we, we get the individual in the, um, in the transit areas so that he can be the agent for the Greyhound bus lines. <clears throat> Alderman Stefan. Thank you, Your Honor. <clears throat> uh, I actually was at the transit meeting when we approved this, Alderman Groff asked me to represent him, so I'm a little more familiar with it. And he already is the, Greg is here somewhere, here he is. He already is the Greyhound agent out of his cards and collectibles store, which is on East Street. And he, you know, is, wants to move into our building. It's kind of a win-win, he'd, he'd still be the Greyhound agent. He'd be selling our bus tokens, he'd be handing out our maps, provide a little supervision there. I think we provided the contract to make sure that, you know, it's not gonna change he, as long as he's doing the Greyhound. And helping us out, it's a 
something that helps both sides, so I really think this is worthwhile. Thank you. Thank you, Alderman Stefan. <coughs> no being any more discussion? Okay, Sue, would you please call the roll? Eberg. Aye. Serta. Aye. Davis. Aye. Graf. Aye. Kittleson. Aye. Manny. Aye. Meyer. Aye. Montemayor. Aye. Radke. Aye. Sigali. Aye. Stefan. Aye. Susha. Aye. Van Akron. Aye. Vanderweel. Aye. Bauman. Aye. And D. Berg. Aye. 16 ayes. Motion carries. 832 will lie over. 833, 834 to be referred. Report of committees, 835, by public protection and safety, recommending filing documents, submitting a communication from, from Donna Veaton, Sweden, of the Skybox Sports Pub and Grill, requesting permission to hold a street fest and reapply for a block permit for the event in August 05. Alderman Vanderweel. Thank you, Your Honor. I'll make a motion to accept and adopt RC 835. There, there's a motion and a, sec a second to accept and adopt under discussion. Under discussion, I would just like to let the council know that we had listened to the neighbors and the owner of Skybox, and we still came with the same conclusion to file the document. Thank you, Alderman Vanderwill. Any further discussion? Not, so please call the roll. Serta? Aye. Davis? Aye. Graf? Aye. Kittleson? Aye. Manny? Aye. Meyer? Aye. Montemayor? Aye. Radke? Aye. Sigali? Aye. Stefan? Aye. Susha? Van Akron, Aye. Vanderweel, Aye. Bauman, Aye. D. Berg, Aye. E. Berg, Aye. 16 ayes. Motion carries. 836 by public protection and safety recommending filing documents submitting a communication from L and L's Incorporated requesting a street closure for their block party, block type party on July 21st, 05 during the Heritage Square bike race and granting permission. Alderman Vanderweel. Thank you, Your Honor. I'll make a motion to accept and adopt RC 836. Second. There's a motion and a second to accept and adopt. Under discussion? There being none, please call the roll, Sue. Davis? Aye. Graf? Aye. Kittleson? Aye. Manny? Aye. Meyer? Aye. Montemayor? Aye. Radke? Aye. Sigali? Aye. Stefan? Aye. Susha? Aye. Van Akron? Aye. Vanderweel? Aye. Bauman? Aye. D. Berg? Aye. E. Berg? Aye. And Serta? Aye. 16 ayes. Motion carries. 837 by Public Protection and Safety recommending filing documents submitting a communication from the Right Way Club Incorporated requesting permission to have music played by a DJ until 11 p.m. on the club's grounds at 4627 South 12th Street during their outdoor deck dance in August 05 and granting permission. Alderman Vanderweel. Thank you, Your Honor. I'll make a motion to accept and adopt RC 837. Second. There's a motion and a second to accept and adopt under discussion. Under discussion, uh, Assistant Attorney Chuck Adams had told us in committee that this isn't the same as with the, uh, with the festivals, lend them to 11. This is a residential, and uh, if they're too loud or if there's problems, the police will still be called and they will be treated the same. Alderman Sigali. Thank you, Your Honor. Um, as I'm looking at this, um, I, I realize this Right Way Club is, is, is just a wonderful club where people can go on that. I just am against the 11 p.m. I think since we, are, uh, we have other uh, organizations that have to close down at 1030, I think this one should be and, and, and the same that this should be um, going down at 1030 instead of 11. Thank you. Thank you, Alderman Sigali. Any further discussion? Not Sue, please call the roll. Graf. Aye. Kittleson. Aye. Manny. Aye. Meyer. Aye. Montemayor. Aye. Radke. Aye. Sigali. No. Stefan. Aye. Susha. Aye. Van Akron. No. Vanderweel. Aye. Bauman. No. D. Berg. No. E. Berg. Aye. Serta. No. Davis. Aye. Ten ayes, five noes, one abstention. Motion carries. 838 to be referred. <coughs> Reported committees. 839 by finance recommend and authorize a transfer of appropriations in the 205 budget. Alderman Graf. Thank you, Your Honor. I move that the RC be accepted and adopted and that we pass the resolution. Second. There's a motion and a second to accept and adopt the uh, reported committee. Under discussion. 
If not, uh, Sue, please call the roll. Kittleson. Aye. Manny. Aye. Meyer. Aye. Montemayor. Aye. Racky. Aye. Sigali. Aye. Stefan. Aye. Susha. Aye. Van Akron. Aye. Vanderweel. Aye. Bauman. Aye. D. Berg. Aye. E. Berg. Serta. Davis. Aye. And Graf. Aye. 16 ayes. Motion carries. 840 by Public Protection and Safety recommending entry into a shared services agreement with Sheboygan County for a shared evidence storage and property area to include an indoor pistol range to be located at the Old City drop-off site at the end of South 19th Street. Alderman Vanderweel. Thank you, Your Honor. I'll make a motion to accept and adopt the RC and put the resolution upon its passage. There's a motion and a second under discussion. Alderman Berg. Yes, well, thank you, Your Honor. I'm sorry. <laughs> e Berg, and then D Berg. Yes, thank you, Your Honor. Uh, uh, in looking at this, uh, I see what is called at the clerk's desk is what, what would be characterized as perhaps a uh, uh, dueling resolution. So I would offer a friendly amendment uh, to this particular document and like to take with 840 uh, 772, which has very similar language. Uh, the amendment, uh, and I'll read the entire document, your committee to was referred, re referred resolution uh, 720506 by Alderman Radke, authorizing and then striking the words entering into a shared service agreement with Sheboygan County. Then substituting the words, the Sheboygan Police Department to enter into a planning process with the Sheboygan County Sheriff's Department. Uh, and that would be period, and then uh, striking uh, after pistol range the words relating to the location. Uh, so striking the words to be located at the old city drop-off site at the end of South 19th Street. So that would be my uh, amendment. There's a motion to amend. Is there a second? Second. A second. Under discussion on the amendment only. Alderman Stephan. I'm sorry, Alderman, go ahead, Alderman Stephan, then I'll call. Um, I was going to speak on this, and I wasn't aware of the amendment, but it takes care of the concerns I had. I went to the meeting the other week, and, and I was concerned about not only tying it into the location, but also that I'm all for the city and the county working together, but I'm under the impression that LTC is building a new building and either is considering or is for sure putting a firing range in there I'd like to at least have discussions about us joining them. At the committee level, uh, the deputy chief was there, I think, at that point. He had thought there was some discussion in the past, but he wasn't sure, wasn't sure if it was going forward. And I just, I think it's good if we, as we can share with two groups, fine. If we can share with three, if we can get every law enforcement from the county to come, the more the merrier, the more. So I think by making the amendment more generic is better for us rather than tying it into one location and one group because I really think there's a potential to share with LTC also, and the taxpayers are already paying for that one. Okay. Thank you, Alderman. Alderman D. Berg, did you want to speak? Yes, Your Honor. <clears throat> I don't see why we're trying to uh, go, go ahead with this right away, because <clears throat> according to our uh, surveys and that stuff, these, these shared services are going to be, no matter where they're going to be, but according to the two top sites or whatever, or whatever it's going to be, you're going to have enough land where you can put the pistol range and the evidence room all in one one location instead of having the police department in one location and uh, the other two facilities in another. I think we should just maybe just wait all, wait until we get the final results on uh, the real location of the police department. Thank you, Alderman Berg. Alderman Sigali on the amendment. Thank you, uh, Your Honor. I just want Sue to repeat it. <clears throat> Sure. So, so that we have the whole thing. If Thank you follow you. along in the document, it would be to, let's see here. In the first paragraph, it says enter, where it starts entering, to replace entering into a shared service agreement with Sheboygan County and replace that with authorizing the Sheboygan Police Department to enter into a planning process with the Sheboygan County Sheriff's Department and then continue on for a shared evidence storage, et cetera. And the other amendment was when you get to the pistol range, it would be a period there and eliminate everything after that. So that it does not designate a site. That was the amendment. Oh, okay. So it would be a period after pistol range. Is that okay? Is that clear? 
Alderman Vanderbilt. Thank you, Your Honor. Um, this is the Board Amendment, keeping it at the drop-off site because you would prefer not to have everything in one place. You would want the evidence center and the, and the evidence center for sure, but and the shooting range off-site. And if uh, D Deputy Chief Weiss, are you still here? Oh, there you are. If you could uh, speak on that a little bit. Deputy Chief Weiss. Thank you, Mayor, uh, Council Members. What, what happened here uh, recently was that the uh, county had approached us and uh, indicated two years ago they asked us to go in on a joint evidence impound storage facility. They are in uh, dire need of a new facility. Rather than build it themselves, they wanted to know if we also needed a facility like that. Uh, we have three areas on the Department of Public Works property that uh, Tom Holton would prefer we vacated so he could utilize that room. Uh, he's been asking that of us for years, but we really had no place to go. Now, just recently, uh, we were approached by Inspector Tenhagen, the Sheboygan County Sheriff's Department, and the county is to be commended for their patience. However, they do need to move on this, and they asked us to make a commitment so my recommendation is that we uh, go together on this joint project. So it's a shared service. Rather than build two separate facilities, we would build one. And the current plan is to incorporate uh, a pistol range at that facility. Alderman yes, Ebert. Thank you, Your Honor. This does not exclude uh, or take anything off the table. It just broadens the scope of your investigation. If, if the conclusion has already been met between the professional staff uh, that there's only one site that's suitable, uh, then it should only be at 19th Street. Uh, but I think we are best served if we look at all available sites and if it's on uh, a site where we will locate uh, a future police station or if it's off site, I guess I would prefer that you look as broad as possible and not just limit yourself to having one specific site? Well, our intent was not to limit ourselves. However, you have to understand the city does own that property at the drop-off site. Uh, that would take precedence over purchasing another site. Now, as far as, I think there may be some confusion here as far as evidence room and the joint impound uh, evidence storage area. First of all, guns, jewelry, uh, money, that will be stored in each facilities, each police department or sheriff's department's own on-site police department. That doesn't go off. But what this is is, say for instance, we have a snow emergency and we tow 30 vehicles. Usually you don't want that on the front lawn of the police department. You want it off-site. If we have accidents uh, over the years, laws have changed. Uh, we are required now to save evidence, especially anything concerning DNA, virtually forever. Uh, the facilities that we have now at the Department of Public Works are starting to fill up. We do need a facility, the county needs a facility, so I think the best uh, taxpayer's dollar is to go in on a, on a joint venture. So it's, it's not necessarily a good idea to put your evidence in impound storage we're not talking about evidence room, but your evidence and impound storage like cars on the police department site. Now, I know of police departments that have it that way. Uh, for instance, one is Oak Creek. Well, they've got just an abundance of land, uh, probably 18 acres, and they've got it hidden in the back with decorative fences. You can't even see it. We don't have that luxury here. So I'm really not trying to limit ourselves to one site. We're looking for the best value, uh, taxpayer speaking. We would welcome the opportunity to, uh, to uh, investigate this matter and plan with the county. They've been uh, very uh, energetic. Uh, they want to get this going because they're losing money heating their present facility, and they, they simply need to, to move on it. Please hold on, Deputy Chief Wise. Uh, Alderman Stephan, question? Thank you, Your Honor. Your Honor. I just wanted to point out to the Deputy Chief, if we don't pass the amendment, in my mind, I think the, the original document does tie us to the other site. So I think it's better to 
pass the amendment and then let you guys decide what's better for the city and county and whatever, whoever. Thank you, Alderman Stephan. Anything else? Alderman Manny. Thank you, Your Honor. Uh, just want to check my memory. I believe that we were told that if we uh, build a, a pistol range on the site of a new police station, that it would be underground and that it would be more costly than building a separate site distinct from the police station. Is that memory accurate, Rich? You're the numbers man. Yes, thank you. OK. Thank you, Deputy Chief. We will call a vote on the, on 840, by like public protection and safety amended. Does everybody, you want me to read the, how it will read? Um, it will read a resolution authorizing enter into, entering, no, I'm sorry, and authorizing the Sheboygan Police Department to enter into a planning process with the Sheboygan County Sheriff's Department for a shared evidence storage and property area to include an indoor pistol range period. That's how the amendment would read. And I vote would be to allow the amendment. Please call the roll. Kittleson. Aye. Manny. Aye. Meyer. Aye. Montemayor. Aye. Radke. Aye. Sigali. Aye. Stefan. Aye. Susha. Aye. Van Akron. Aye. Vanderweel. Aye. Bauman. Aye. D. Berg. Aye. E. Berg. Serta. Davis. Aye. And Graf. Aye. 16 ayes. Motion passes. Bauman Graf would like to make a motion to approve. It, uh, I'm sorry, Alderman Vanderweel. Motion to approve as amended. I'll make a motion to approve the uh, RC as amended. Okay. Motion a second. Under discussion. Thank you, Alderman Vanderweel. Not uh, Sue. Please call the roll. Manny. Aye. Meyer. Aye. Montemayor. Aye. Radke. Aye. Sigali. Aye. Stefan. Aye. Susha. Aye. Van Akron. Aye. Vanderweel. Aye. Bauman. D. Berg, Aye. E. Berg, Serta, Davis, Aye. Graf, Aye. and Kittleson. Aye. 16 ayes. Motion passes. 841 by public protection and safety recommending prohibiting encouraging the, the congregating of seagulls by feeding or any other means in any location with the, within the city of Sheboygan limits and passing ordinance with amendment to add the word knowingly, uh, quote unquote, to no person shall knowingly encourage the congregating of seagulls by feeding or any other means in any location within the city of Sheboygan limits. Alderman Vanderweel. Thank you, Your Honor. I'll make a motion to accept and adopt the RC and put the general ordinance upon its passage. There's a motion in the second. Under discussion? Uh, under discussion. Uh, this will make it so that people can have bird feeders and have, and when they put their garbage out, they don't have to worry about getting a ticket because the birds come in their yard and, and feed on that. And also, I would like to make an amendment uh, to the RC changing seagulls to gulls. <laughs> Very <Sorry>. good. <laughs> I think we got a lesson by the press and WHBL that these are not seagulls, they're gulls. <laughs> There's a motion by Alderman Vanderweel to change the word seagulls to simply gulls. Is there a second? Yeah. There's a second, and that's a motion to amend. Amend. We just need an all eyes. Huh? We would just need an all eyes for that. Yep. You need what? No roll call for that. You don't need just roll an all call. eyes. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion passes. Okay. And then we just need final. Now vote. we need the yep. final vote here. Yep. Sue, please call the roll. Um, this would be as amended. Uh, Montemayor. Aye. Radke. Aye. Sigali. Aye. Stefan. Aye. Susha. Aye. Van Akron. Aye. Vanderweel. Aye. Bauman, D. Berg, E. Berg, Serta, Aye. Davis, Aye. Graf, Aye. Kittleson, Aye. Manny, Aye. and Montem, I'm sorry, and Meyer. Aye. Sorry. 16 eyes. Motion carries. Matters laid over, 775. RO number 1330506 by the city clerk submitting a communication from the Wisconsin Department of Administration stating that they do not object to the final plat for the woods. Who's going to take this one, Alderman Graf? Sure. I would move that the RO will be accepted and adopted. Right. Yeah. There's a motion in the second to, to accept and follow RO. Second. second. 
under discussion? If not, all those in favor state aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries. 769. RO number 1340506 by the Board of Parks and Forestry Commissioner recommending filing various documents. Let's take this one. Alderman Bowman. I thank you, Your Honor. I would uh, make the motion in that the report of officer be accepted and placed on file. There's a, mo there's a motion and a second to accept and file the report of officer under discussion. If not, all those in favor, please state aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries. 745, resolution number 6705 by Alderman Groff, Stefan Montemeyer, and Davis authorizing a transfer of appropriations in the 205 budget. Alderman Groff. Thank you, Your Honor. That uh, resolution along with the next resolution, which is also authorizing a transfer of appropriations in the 2005 budget, and then also 747, which is another resolution which authorized a purchasing agent to extend the contract for administrating the city's cash management program. I would move that the three resolutions be put upon their passage. Second. There's a motion and a second that all three resolutions, 745, 46, and 747, be put upon their passage under discussion. <clears throat> if not, Sue, please call the roll. Meyer? Aye. Montemayor? Aye. Radke? Aye. Sigali? Aye. Stefan? Aye. Susha? Aye. Van Akron? Aye. Vanderweel? Aye. Bauman? Aye. D. Berg? Aye. E. Berg? Aye. Serta? Davis, aye. Groff, aye. Kittleson, aye. and Manny. Aye. 16 ayes. Motion <laughs> passes. 758, General Ordinance number 210506 by Alderman Radke and Groff, repealing Division 3 of Article 4, Chapter 2 of the, of the Municipal Code related to a municipal court for the city of Sheboygan. Alderman Radke. Thank you, Your Honor. I uh, ask that the General Ordinance be put upon its passage. There's a motion and a second. No longer we put upon his passage. Alderman Montemayor. Thank you, Your Honor. Um, Attorney Steve McLean, could you give us a catch up on the municipal court background for the new alderman? Thank you. Attorney McLean. Thank you, Your Honor. Uh, in uh, August of 2003, the council established a special committee to study the feasibility of establishing a municipal court and uh, set a criteria of uh, providing a report to the council on the feasibility by September 30th, 2004. Uh, the committee was comprised of two aldermen, uh, Alderman Warner and Alderman Wangaman. Uh, obviously, neither of them was currently on the council. Myself, Sergeant Katowski from the police department, uh, a private attorney, attorney David Gass, two citizen members, Ronald Beenan and Ronald Erline, and the finance director, Rich Gebhardt, was an ex officio member. Uh, that, <clears throat> that study committee met regularly on the second and fourth Monday of every month for a year. Uh, so we had, I'd say, roughly 20 meetings over the year. <clears throat> The, uh, the committee looked at uh, some, what they considered five key topics uh, regarding uh, the feasibility of establishing a municipal court, put together a report that was submitted to the council, um, I believe in September of 2004. Uh, I've got several copies. I didn't make copies for all the aldermen, but uh, if you'd like them, uh, I've got, I think, eight of them I can distribute. They don't have the exhibits that were fairly extensive, but uh, has 12 pages that uh, comprises the, uh, the text of the report. Uh, the, the bottom line conclusion and recommendation of the study committee was, uh, was this, and I'll read the report. Committee members unanimously conclude that creating a municipal court is feasible for the city and that the estimated additional cost to the city in setting up and operating a municipal court will be more than offset by the increased revenue to the city. It's recommended that such a court not commence operating until the chosen municipal court software system is in place and functional. Should the council choose to proceed to implement a municipal court, the committee recommends as follows, that a municipal court module to the current crime system software be developed 
that a judge position be part-time, that the judge be an attorney, and that the term of office be initially set at two years, that staffing and salaries for court personnel be established consistent with this report and the committee's proposed municipal court budget, that the council chambers be used temporarily as the courtroom and that permanent facilities for the municipal court be incorporated into the design for the new police department building. And finally, that the council explore the willingness of neighboring municipalities to participate in a joint municipal court. Uh, subsequent to the uh, report being submitted to the council, um, discussed at Committee of the Whole, the council did uh, pass uh, an ordinance, general ordinance uh, 370405 in December of 2004, uh, establishing a municipal court for the city of Sheboygan. Uh, along the line also, the city authorized uh, hiring Paragon Software to start developing a, uh, the municipal court software package. And I think that was at a cost of either seventeen or $20,000. Uh, uh, <clears throat> the ordinance provided or contemplated that the court would be established June 1 of 2005. But as, as the uh, committee report indicated, uh, the committee felt, and the council went along with it, that, that a uh, criteria be before getting up and running that this municipal court software package be developed so that uh, the court could, once it started, could have software that it would continue with and not have to start on uh, one procedure and then switch over to the new software. Uh, that software package has not been completed yet. There the Paragon software is still uh, working on it. I don't have an estimated date for its completion, but it's probably in the neighborhood of uh, one to two months away before it's, the software is ready to go. At that point, or sometime before that, uh, I think the contemplation would have been to uh, put out uh, RFPs for a judge. The, the judge would be initially appointed by the council and subsequently it would be an elected position and uh, later on there would be an election on the judge but it would be appointed initially. And uh, the process would have also been to hire the, uh, the court personnel. The council had authorized the table of organization to provide for one and a half uh, clerical people, uh, municipal court clerks. And, but that initially the city hire one full-time clerk and then see how it went, whether that was going to be sufficient administrative support or whether the additional half-time person would need to be added. But that could, would be down the road sometime. Obviously, this report contemplated, I think, using the council chambers on an interim basis as the courtroom. And it, it was contemplated at the time that the, uh, the police station, new police station, uh, was going to be built in Sheridan Park and was on a timeline for eventual construction around 2007, I believe, thereabouts. Uh, so there was some finality to, <clears throat> to a location for a permanent site. Uh, you know, the problem you have now is you don't have a definite timeline on a police station. So if you did continue with the municipal court, it's likely you'd be using the council chambers for probably an extended period of time. It's tough to say how long, I guess, but that would be within the council's uh, discretion. Uh, you know, the council chambers never was really viewed as a real positive site, but it was looked at as adequate on a short-term basis. Uh, that, I believe, Alderman Montemayor, perhaps a rather lengthy explanation is kind of the history and where we are today. Thank you. Thank you, Attorney McLean. Alderman Deberg. Thank you, Your Honor. <clears throat> no, I can support rescinding that municipal court because of the fact, you know, we all just finished up with uh, a land lady that took about 25 years to settle. 
And that's mainly because of the fact most of these ordinances all go to the circuit court. And this is not their priority. Their priority is criminal cases. If we had our own municipal court, those, the, the building inspection department worked their head off to get these people into the court system. And it's just pushed back, pushed back, pushed back, and drawn out like it happened with the last lady. If we don't get a municipal judge to handle all these ordinances on fixing your houses and everything else, we're gonna start building another list, a list just like the, the one we just settled. So I cannot, we gotta have a municipal judge of court. I will not support this. Just a point of clarification, Alderman Burke. <coughs> uh, I don't know that the Madeline case uh, had a whole lot to do with whether we had a, a municipal court or not. No, I'm just saying that. Yeah. Uh, right, I, no, I know. It took us so too many years to settle it. Right, thank you, sir. Alderman Serta. Thank you, Your Honor. Given um, what City Attorney Steve McLean shared here tonight, I'm wondering how the public at home and for those of you sitting in the gallery and the media feel about making a critical decision if you were put into our place on voting on this issue. Did Steve McLean give you enough information that you could give an informative decision right now to vote on this issue? I am surprised to see this document here tonight. There was a similar, if not almost identical document at the last council meeting that was referred to the Committee of the Whole. I have made contact with Alder Person, who is chairman of the Committee of the Whole, um, Montemayor, and as an email, which I, I sent to her on 7-5 of 2005, I said, as chairwoman of the Committee of the Whole, I would like to request from you to allow me to invite Mr. William Wongneman to speak to us and therefore be placed on the agenda regarding document, which again was almost identical to this, 757, rescinding the municipal court ordinance being submitted to the committee on July 11, 2005. Please let me know at your earliest convenience. Thank you, sincerely, Elder Person Bonnie. Talking with Marilyn, we decided that we would hold that off to another meeting because of the police station sites taking the majority of that time. I am still waiting to discuss this at the Committee of the Whole. However, here is an opportunity to get this issue through the back door. You just put it on the agenda, it doesn't get referred, and the whole thing that I've been working with, with Alder Person, Marilyn Montemayor on this, it's all gonna be taken care of right now. Courtesy to the new Alder Persons here, I don't even know if they've even have gotten that report. There was many hours spent on discussing this. I don't know if people realize that other municipalities has contacted the city of Sheboygan because of the work we've done on this issue and asked to see our report because they want to put it into effect. And just to put this through the back door, and I think it would apply here by saying that this is what you call railroading. This is it right now. And Steve, I feel for you because to put that in a 10 minute soundbite, if that, I think is asking a lot from you. This should have been explored in the committee. And secondly, I need you to help me clarify because some of the elder persons are under the impression that this is just kind of putting it away that we can always bring forward later. Could you tell me, is this proper protocol that you just file it and get rid of it? I mean, we have it in place now, we're not acting on it. And then with that, I would make a motion that we refer this document to the committee of the whole and that we can spend the time to discuss it properly. Thank you. Second. There's a motion, an alternate motion to refer 758 to the committee of the whole. <clears throat> there's a second? Second? Somebody? Okay. Second? Under discussion? Yes, Attorney McLean. Uh, Your Honor, thank you. Uh, Alderman Serta, in, in answer to your question as far as protocol, uh, it's, you know, this issue whether to have a municipal court is totally within the council's discretion. Uh, right now, you know, as of December 2004, the council voted to create a municipal court. Uh, I guess the good news is one is not currently established, so if you're undoing it, it it's going to be a lot easier than if it was established and then you tried to, uh, uh, you know, uh, undo something that was in place. Uh, but the, the document as proposed repeals the entire section of the code that created the municipal court. So uh, what you would have to do in the future would, would be to start from scratch. You'd have to create a new ordinance creating, a, creating the municipal court. And there's nothing to say that the council couldn't do that either. Um, so it's, 
you know, it's really in the council's hands, I guess, uh, to the extent that there are new aldermen on the council that aren't familiar with the, the study committee's report, it, it may not be a bad thing to, uh, to have some discussion at the committee of the whole if that's your desire uh, and have an opportunity, those aldermen have an opportunity to review that study committee report. Um, there was a lot of time and effort put into that study, but there again, it was just a recommendation to the council. Um, it listed pros and cons. It really didn't uh, uh, say you had to do this or had to do that. And um, as, as I say, uh, the council has broad discretion on what you want to do. Thank you, Attorney McLean. We'll take them in order as they're showing up on the screen here. Alderman Montemayor. Thank you, Your Honor. Um, information that Steve McLean gave to us could have been done at a committee of the whole, way down the line, because we have other things that are coming up right now. And I certainly respect Steve McLean's information that he gave to us, and I certainly respect all the aldermen's intelligence about knowing what's going on. Thank you. Thank you, Alderman McLean. Alderman Ratke. Thank you, Your Honor. I wasn't trying to take a backdoor approach here. What I was trying to do is listen to people I've been talking to. Here's another bureaucracy in the city of Sheboygan. We're going to make all this money on fines. You're going to fine us more. The police are going to get us. The building inspectors are going to get us. We've got no money. There's no mention that we're going to make money. We're going to lose money. We're getting a half a million a year from the county now. Why should we give that up? Just for the simple fact that we can go out and write more tickets for more people. That's what I keep hearing from the people continuously. And that's what I came in here and said, OK, fine. You guys want the court gone? I'll bring something in to get rid of it. I mean, it's as simple as that. It's another bureaucracy within the city. We've got budget time coming up. I mean, I'd rather see the streets get plowed and the garbage get picked up and the police officers out in their squads as opposed to seeing the court system uh, get a little bit taken off their load over on 6th Street. That's what they're there for. We're here to run a city and not write more tickets, and that's what people are telling me left and right. They don't want any more tickets, and this is just a good excuse for them to go to work and write more. Thank you, Alderman Retke. Alderman Mann. I believe that the uh, referral to the committee takes precedence, and we should only be speaking to that motion because that would be the first motion on the floor. The referral to a committee, is that correct, Steve? Yes. Call roll. This is to refer back to, or not back to, to the committee of the whole. Montemayor. Uh, no. Radke. No. Sigali. Aye. Stefan. Aye. Susha. No. Van Akron. Aye. Vanderweel. Aye. Bauman. Aye. Deberg. Aye. Eberg. Aye. Serta. Aye. Davis. Aye. Groff. No. Kittleson. Aye. Manny. Aye. Meyer. Eleven eyes, five no's. Seven fifty-eight will be referred to committee of the whole. Mm -hmm. Seven seventy-six, general ordinance number twenty-two oh five oh six by Alderman Vanderweel, repealing and recreating section one eighteen fifty-four of the municipal code, so as to permit and regulate neighborhood watch signs, neighborhood organization signs, and neighborhood against drug signs. Alderman Vanderweel. Thank you, Your Honor. I'll make a motion to put the general ordinance upon its passage. Second. There's a mo motion, a second, to put 7 to 76 upon its passage under discussion. If not, please call the roll. Radke? Aye. Sigali? Aye. Stefan? Aye. Susha? No. Van Akron? Aye. Vanderweel? Aye. Bauman? Aye. Deberg? Aye. Eberg? Aye. Serta? Aye. Davis? Aye. Groff? Aye. Kittleson? Manny, Aye. Meyer, Aye. I'm sorry, Aye. thank you. Montemayor, Aye. 15 ayes, one no. Motion carries. Next, uh, I'd ask for a motion to go into closed session and then after that, after we vote, we'll take a five minute break. Thank you, Your Honor. I would move that we convene in closed session under the exemption provided in section 19.851E of the Wisconsin Stats state statutes where competitive and bargaining reasons require a closed session for the purpose of considering a request to obtain city-owned parcels of land. There's a motion and a second. Sue, please call the roll. Sigali? Aye. Stefan? Aye. Susha? Aye. Van Akron? Aye. Vanderweel? Aye. Bauman? Aye. Deberg? Aye. Eberg? 
Aye. Serta? Aye. Davis? Aye. Graf? Aye. Kittleson? Aye. Manny? Aye. Meyer? Aye. Montemayor? Aye. And Radke? Aye. 16 ayes. Motion carries. We will go into closed session in five minutes. Take a break. We'll move on to other matters authorized by law. 842 will be referred to Committee of the Whole. Attorney McLean, other matters? 843 is a uh, draft of the Zimmerman Report on police station sites. And that will be referred to Committee of the Whole also. Okay, that's it, very good. Now I need a motion uh, to call to the clerk's desk, 587, Alderman Graff. Thank you, Your Honor. 587, I would ask that that be called to the clerk's desk, as well as 772. There's a motion. Yeah. We, right, but these are both being called out of the Shared Services Committee. There's a motion to call to the clerk's desk, 587, 772. Is there a second? Second. Second, under discussion. Hold the draft. Any? Thank you, Your Honor. Um, the reason these need to be called to the um, clerk's desk and we need to act on them is because right now we have these two in what used to be called Shared Services Committee, and there's a question of how long that committee will continue. And because of that, in order to get this information to the county, we have to send them a copy of something so that know, they know we're serious about doing what we want to do as far as these joint services go. Therefore, I'm asking that the council uh, pass a motion to uh, send a copy of these resolutions to, um, to the county board's law committee. And then uh, that way we can get the ball rolling as well. Then, then they will be returned to, the originals will be returned to the shared services committee until something is decided regarding that committee. So that's what I'm looking for tonight because if that is eliminated, if that committee is eliminated and replaced by uh, a new committee that's being developed, um, then we will just keep it in, um, in file folder until we have the new committee approved. There was a motion and a second. Any discussion? Mm -hmm. Mr. Stefan. Thank you, Your Honor. So what is the motion? <laughs> the motion to is call. to send a copy of, of these two documents to the county board law committee. Okay, so we're not voting on them and approving them or anything, we're just sending no. them over no. there? Okay. Correct. Thank you, Alderman Stefan. Any further discussion? Uh, Attorney McLean? Just a point of clarification. 772, my understanding is that that would be not as it was worded. Sorry. That, that was as amended uh, with uh, the other document, 840. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Good point. Thank you, Attorney McLean. Okay. All those in favor of the motion, state aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion carries. Mm -hmm. All those in favor? Aye. We're adjourned.